Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One. It is Wednesday, September the 22nd, the year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Understanding the buy zone. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. The buy zone. Um, somebody was asking me about it and Usually, I kind of just gloss over it because I've been doing it for so long, but I thought I'd kind of take you back to the beginning. And so, that's back when I was trading stocks. I think I started on online trading um, somewhere around 2001, but I've been trading since 1977. Anyway, um, stock fetcher is one of the um, tools I use to do my analysis. And so what I did was basically have a frequency distribution. I look at the last 100 days. In this case, this is for longs only. How many times was the high minus the open between zero and nine cents? And in the case of Google, just one time. How many times was it between 10 and 19, 20 and 29, and so on, up to 50 to 99, and 100 or more, or a dollar or more? So what I would do is I looked at this analysis, and I go, wait a minute, there's this huge gap between here and here where there's hardly any numbers. So if it only goes between 0 and 9, that's just a no trade. It only went up nine cents. I'm not looking to trigger. I look to enter between 10 and 20. So in this area. And so in these, if I entered, those would have been losers on that day. So out of 100 days, if I was doing Tesla, it's two losers. So did it go up 50 cents or more? How many times? Or a dollar or more? Now, with these high dollar stocks, you'd say, well, well of course they'll go up that high. But... You can scroll on down, and so here's this $50 stock right here, Sava. Never heard of it before. But, so it went up 0 to 9 three times. So that's three days out of 100. I wouldn't have gone long. And then one time, it went between um, 10 and 19. I would have taken the trade. And then here, on this day, it got between 20 and 30 once. Maybe I would have... Uh, gotten a profit maybe not but i'd even say you could call these two losers so out of 97 there's two losers that's 95 days where here i would have made at least 10 cents or more um and right here i believe this column would have been the 50 column and then the next one is a dollar or more so 83 times out of 100, had I gotten in, I could have made, say, at least half of that, 50 cents. And that's just a simple frequency distribution. Now, most of, uh, I think, the people who um, are subscribed to my channel are probably saying, but yeah, but we do Forex. So I wrote the uh, frequency um display indicators and this particular one is 2020 but there's I, I made a new one for 2021 just every time I think of I might think of a new feature so I add it to the to the current year's version so here we have high minus open on the pound dollar so between zero and uh 10 you can see it happened 12 times so wouldn't have entered the trade so 10 or between 10 or um 20 happened 10 times so in that particular case maybe i would have taken a win maybe i would have taken a loss but here it hit 20 so if i would have gotten in at 10 there were 16 times and as you can see here 100 or more high minus open seven times so that's the frequency distribution and that shows me statistically 
I've got a chance to win. Now, if we look at the buy zone, here we have it. So in this particular case, it went up and got between 8 and 10 pips and then ran on up to, so we had 66 was the best 78. So there was a chance to make 12 pips or more taking that trade. Now, of course, here, this is the first trade of the day. The spreads are whacked. You wouldn't even enter there. Here, there could have been an entry. Maybe you stopped out if it closes above the daily open, or maybe you say, hey, you know what? If it gets there, I'm out. But here again, there was a chance for a win. Here again, there was a chance for a win. Now, these are green H1 candles. It hit the buy zone and reversed. Uh, that's only for experienced traders. One of the things you're seeing, it would be bumping up against the psychological 50 line. So that might tell you, yeah, I'll take, I'll, I'll take a chance on those shorts. And you can see they would have paid off. So this is just a pure statistical trade based on the range, but it's high minus open and then open minus the low. So if we go back here, you can see here on the open minus the low, 12 times no trade, 21 times between 10 and 20, uh, 20 or more 14 times. And I'm thinking, uh, let's see, do, does this version have the cumulative? Yeah, we can switch this over to cumulative. Uh, show cumulative true. And then that way you can see the percent of times so 100 percent of the time it's above zero uh above 10 88 percent of the time above 20 78 percent of the time so if you look here 88 trades you probably would have gotten in and 78 you could have taken a dime and so if you would have lost on 10 but went on 78 i do the math obviously you're going to come out ahead and the same is true on the short side uh above 10 88 above 20 67 so once again uh do the math um you take 88 trades you win 67 you lose what 21 you're still ahead of the game but out of these, some of these trades, you may have gotten even more than just 20. You may have got into these because this is the cumulative frequency distribution. So I hope that um, explains the, uh, the buy zone. And if it doesn't, feel free to ask more questions. Like I said, I developed it in the stock market and then came over to the Forex market. I think that was around 2008, 9, 10 maybe. I can't remember exactly, but somewhere around there. Um, probably around 8, 8 or 9, maybe even before. Anyway, um, Once the main thing to know is is that when price is near the open, it has to range. And right now we're only at what 62 pip range for the day. Pounds usually above that. Let's see. That's the D1 range, the daily range. Oh wow, yesterday was only 52. We had a so. Chances are it'll probably be a little bit bigger, especially considering today is FOMC. So that announcement's going to happen in about two hours and 25 minutes from now. So expect to see something happen. So if you're trading it, you know, it could push above the daily previous day's high, could break the previous day's low. And so you just have to wait and see what happens. Just remember, price doesn't like staying in the wick zone. And we can look at some of the other charts here. Let's see. 
Look at the monthly, 44 pips off that monthly low. So any green rats, hopefully you're enjoying some, some cheese. We still have one, two, three pairs that haven't filled the gap. 43 pips off today's low. So those green rats and red rats, I'm um, pretty sure at least the green rats probably got some cheese. The red rats, maybe in the beginning. As you can see, we're only 17 pips above the yearly open. Ninety-five below the monthly and eighty below the weekly and two above the daily. We just crossed above there. Yesterday was an inside bar. You see, we already broke it once today. So short at 40, long at 92 would be the call. 62 pip range. One, two, three, four, five, six pairs over a hundred at the moment. And three of them are pound pairs. Back to the buy zone. So once again, price usually doesn't stick around the open. It has to go one way or the other. And green rats definitely got their cheese. We're in the red rat zone here, just exiting. I wanted to look at something. Why are those? We got the big numbers. Oh, that's because I put the... Uh, I put an extra indicator on there. Let's see. Let's change that. Let's make that a one. And then they'll just write over top of each other. Like so. And you can think of the uh, the rat zones almost kind of an opposite from the buy zone in the sense that the buy zone, we're trading away from the open, but with the rat zone, we're trading back towards it because we know price is going to make a high and come back and price is going to make a low and reverse. So this is the reversal trades, whereas the buy zone is more or less a breakout trade. You know, you can think of this as a breaking out to the downside from the uh, red rat zone and to the upside of the green rat zone, but usually you want to get a trade before these levels so you can get in and take some of that profit. And the pivot trading plan it was uh, says uh, moderately bearish. Uh, if you're near the pivot, it wants you to go short. If you're near S1, it actually was below S1, actually hit the weekly S2 and returned. It was calling the long in this area. And we have a missed pivot from a couple of days ago. Who knows, maybe that gets taken out with the FOMC. We'll just have to wait and find out what happens. In and out of the upper and lower wick zones today from the previous day's candle, daily candle that is, and the high highest lows putting on trades lowest high and yesterday i talked about expectations i was on the phone with walmart earlier when we were trading and i called that price was going to hit 60 because i saw a return bar <laughs> but um actually no it wasn't 60 it was 36 um that it was going to hit this return bar and i jumped out at a trade and left pips on the table because I didn't just put the TP and, and let things alone. You know, once again, expectations. So fellow traders, I hope that helped explain the buy zone because when you're trading, you have to always remember that it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. And once again, a shout out to the, uh, members over on the Reddit forum and the members on the Forex forum or group. I appreciate your support. 
This is a rumpled one over and out.